Hey, it's Curious Bell here with another project, and today I'm going to make a steam power plant, but not in the conventional way that you use a turbine and stuff, but this time I want to use the Peltier effect. You might be asking yourself, why does this guy want to build a steam power plant? Why doesn't he just buy a gas generator? And the answer would be, you must be new here. If you haven't seen my video on how to make a hot water heater, I suggest you press the link right here and go and watch that and you can come back to this later. If you want to skip the science on how and why this project works, then I suggest you go ahead to this timestamp I got showing on the screen right now. In the past, I've had smaller, unsubstantial Peltier effect power units. For example, this one was made with a candle and cooled with a fan powered by the module. Barely enough excess power to even light an LED. This one was better, but still unsustainable. I would light it on the fire on the top half and cool it with creek water on the bottom half to get a larger temperature differential. But it was very difficult to keep the fire going, and the heat likes to rise away from the plates that were made to get hot. Also, location was not ideal. With this new unit, I plan on fixing all the problems that I had with the old units. Location will be better because it will be out of the creek. The unit will be away from the fire, thereby prolonging the life, and the potential for more energy input into the system taking the fire size out of the equation. This will also allow me to have more units attached to the system. The cooling will be coming from the cold water which is pumped from the ram pump. And because steam never gets above 212 degrees, I won't have to worry about damage from overheating. Okay, so this is a Peltier module. How this works is two dissimilar metals form a junction, known as a thermocouple, producing a voltage when exposed to temperature differentials. This alone is not enough for a power source, but it is how most thermometers work. When you stack one on top of the other, you get a cumulative effect of all the single thermocouples combined. And they're relatively pretty small in size, so thankfully for us, you can get quite a bit of power out of them when you combine them all. Peltier effects are also used in mini fridges and dehumidifiers because when you apply voltage to them, you can actually cause one side to get hot and the other side to get cold, the opposite of what I'm trying to do. Okay, let's get to the project at hand. Okay, I went ahead and made a couple of these. They're gonna go right on there. And the reason why I did it off camera is because I've gotten this wrong quite a few times before I got it right. Copper, is, copper pipe is really hard to bend. And now I'm just taking these off because well, they gotta come off before I can solder onto this thing. So what I need is two copper sheets to attach these modules to. One side to heat and the other to cool. I want copper both because it's thermally conductive and because I can solder it easily. Now I need to add copper pipes to transfer steam and cold water to the area just on the other side of the plates from the modules. Dirt the dirt. That is hot still. But I thought it was this one. Yep, that's the problem. Because I'm stupid. I'll take my Peltier modules. I'll put them in there like that. This will make the heat a little more receptive to going from one to the other. Now we're over by the soldering iron, I'm going to solder these wires up. I'm going to do all of these in series, and all of these in series, and then those two will go in parallel. Okay, so now I just got these ones hooked up right here. That's not to say these ones, but you can see I got my meter plugged up. Using my alligator clips to go ahead and hook these up. See on there, it's uh, 20 millivolts at the second, well 19 now. But let's put my hand on here. Should warm it up a bit. Yep. Now it's 30, 40, 50 millivolts. So we know that there is continuity 
at least through these four Peltzier modules. Um, yeah, I went all the way up to 70. Let's see what kind of power we can get. We just heat it up a bit. Okay, we got one volt already. Or negative one volt. Two volts. Three volts. Four volts. And, uh, five volts. So we could charge, looks like it kept out at five volts. Now we're not cooling the other side, so if we start cooling the other side, it'll do better. Now I have to do that to the other side and see how it does. So, I might need to skip this one, or the next there. Yeah, so, but these two, not working. I can get the hot out here, and if it pops off, it's not going to burn stuff as bad or get it as wet. Okay, so there's one thing I want to do before we go ahead and test, and that is make this a little bit better. Uh, what I'm going to be doing here is adding another radiator. So this was the inside part of the AC unit, and this was the outside, that was the outside part. And I'm going to be adding this on top of it in series so it can act as a preheater. That way I get more steam production. And I will be... This is the old frame to an Xbox, but that will be the space in between these. But I'm going to have to connect all the plumbing. Okay, so currently I have the steam actually so hot that there's literally no steam. It's just hot air coming out the end. I know it should have some more air, but I'm using it to actually make a torch to heat up the fire more. I'm having fun. Okay, so right here I got my fire going. I got the radiator ready to flip on top of this with the double coil. I've got this running. I've got more water coming out the cold side than the hot side. That's fine because the steam will expand and it'll make more pressure. But I'm pretty much just going to leave this out to the side. I might add a brick to lay it on or something. Um, leave the hot side up. That way it can uh, heat and rise. Um, and I'll just go ahead and do it and see what, what I can run with it. Cold for sure. That's definitely getting hot. So right now I'm getting 4.4 4 volts. Pretty consistently. That steam is pretty consistent. That's a good steam. I'm not seeing any water come out. Looks like I'm getting 140 milliamps at four okay it's going up hmm. it's not as consistent as I'd like almost five volts okay, so grab some more alligator clips and hook up these other uh, cells that aren't currently working six point two volts Oh, that's just, that's pretty good. Okay, so, yeah, the cable, the USB charging cable. Just cut it in half. That way I can do it either way. I do have this laser module. Let's try this sucker out. Yep, that's definitely going. 
You like that? A laser module is working good. Perfect voltage for that. Currently, and this fluctuates a little bit, I am getting, there you go, 150 milliamps. Now it goes all the way up to 250, fluctuates back and forth. But voltage DC, okay, I'm getting 5 volts. It goes all the way up to 6, it kind of fluctuates again. So if I had a uh, DC converter, something that would keep it consistent, that'd be nice. But I am able to hook these wires up to the USB C and charge my phone. Okay, so hot side is this side, cold side is that side, cold, definitely hot. <laughs> And I will bring my phone up so you can see. There we go. 46% charging. And I'll go ahead and unplug it. Not charging. Plug it in. Charging. Awesome. Awesome sauce. That makes me happy. That something like this actually works. And I'll tell you what, it's so much nicer not having to build a fire in the middle of the creek. So it looks like uh, I had to put all of the Peltier modules in series in order to get 5 volts consistently. It was running from 5 to 6 volts. And I'm quite happy with that. I was hoping to get a little bit more current. The current I'm getting is uh, anywhere from 100 to 250 milliamps. It will charge your phone, but it would take all night. Whereas a normal wall outlet does 1 to 2 amps, this is 1 to 2 million, so 1 tenth the power. Uh, it's going to take 10 times longer to charge your phone with this than it would to charge your phone out of the wall. It'd probably be better for your phone because fast chargers actually break down the cell membranes of most lithium ion batteries. But to keep the fire going all night, I, mm, <laughs> is this worth it? Electrically, I think solar is a much better option. The amount of energy you need to cut down the wood to keep this fire going, to keep the steam going, to make a little bit of power isn't really worth it. But it is really cool that I got it to work. I can't believe it. <laughs> uh, a lot of work went into this one. I hope the video comes out alright. I guess my next video will be about... If I can make it work, it might not work. Um, using the steam to run a turbine. It isn't much, but in a grid down scenario, this could be the difference between life and death. If you really liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Consider buying some of the merchandise below or even becoming a patron. It would go a long way to help supporting my channel. You guys had a great Christmas week. Let's try to keep that Christ joy just a little bit longer and take it with us into 2020.